Hello wonderful person and welcome to a system called Kepler 80. Today we're going to talk about two different things. One of them is actually going to be related to this beautiful system and the really cool thing we've discovered about it. And another one is going to be about exomoons and the search for these exomoons in various systems. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> Now I've decided to actually just talk about two things here, mostly because uh, both of them are pretty exciting, both of them are kind of related, because uh, a similar technique has been used to basically um, find uh, these planets in this particular system known as Kepler-80, and also um, this particular technique is also used to find so-called exomoons, moons of um, exoplanets, of planets outside of our solar system. Now, the cool thing about this particular system, Kepler-80, and I'm going to actually zoom out just to show you what it looks like, is that we've uh, officially confirmed that this beautiful system has not one, not two, but five different exoplanets. You can see them orbiting as soon as I accelerate time right here. Anytime now, there we go. And because they're so close to the parent star known as Kepler-80, these five planets orbit relatively fast, and there might be obviously more planets on the outskirts, but we haven't really detected anything else. But all five of these um, are orbiting essentially uh, within about 8% of the distance uh, of Earth from the Sun, so within about 0 0.08 astronomical units. This obviously implies that uh, one year on each of these planets is very, very, very fast. So let's go take a look at the nearest ones, uh, starting with Kepler 80. B, which I think is right here. There it is. So um, as you can see, um, all of these are going to be super, super hot. This one here is orbiting really, really fast. Um, and the orbital period here is only just under one day. So basically one day here is one year here as well. This is what this beautiful planet looks like in Space Engine. It is a very, very hot object with a temperature of about 1400 degrees Celsius, or sorry, Kelvin, which is uh, about 1100 degrees Celsius um, on the surface here. So it's a pretty hot, or I guess super hot desert, desert world. And all of these uh, planets are essentially very similar. They're very, very, very hot because the sun here is very close. Now, why am I actually talking about this system? Uh, well, it's not really because of the exoplanets. It's actually about um, a study that has recently been published by a student that used to be an undergraduate student in Florida Institute of Technology, and I believe her name is Mariah McDonald. So she basically discovered something really cool about these five um, planets by using mathematics. And so she discovered that these five uh, exoplanets, and here they're actually called um, Kepler 80, B, C, D, E, F, um, they actually have a really interesting arrangement every 27 days. I'm going to try to see if I can recreate this here, but basically she discovered that, and this was all done mathematically, that every 27 days, because of the way that they orbit around each other, they actually align every 27 days, which is actually very, very rare. Um, there are not that many systems that we know of where alignments happen regularly. In our own solar system, it happens every few hundred years, and it's actually really, really rare. Um, and here, it just seems to happen periodically every 27 days. I want to see if we actually can recreate this in Space Engine because it does seem to have a relatively accurate representation of um, this particular system. I just need to possibly decrease the um, magnitude here, or exposure that is, just so we can see the planets and um, the actual star a little bit better. And let's see if it's about to happen, and well, not exactly. All right, so let's wait a little bit more. Um, I've been actually kind of trying to catch this alignment uh, just to see if it's actually relatively accurately represented here because it would be really interesting to find out if we can maybe make it happen because um, in our solar system, it is very, very difficult to have this alignment occur. So let's try this again. I'm going to wait a few seconds uh, and see if this is actually going to be that alignment where all of the five planets come into the same line. And it's supposed to happen every 27 days. All right, so this was not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I'm going to wait just a little bit more. And here goes another attempt. This is attempt number four or five. Um, and looks like it hasn't happened again, even though I've definitely waited longer than 27 days. All right, so I've actually decided to double check the orbital periods for all of these planets just to see if um, it's accurately represented in Space Engine. And you know what? It's actually very, very accurate. It's um, as accurate as about, I would say, hundredth of a day. 
which means that technically we should see at least one of the alignments because the paper um, that this person has written describes uh, these alignments um, happen every 27 days. Now, I'm not entirely sure why we seem to be unlucky because I've already waited a few months um, and this has definitely not happened just yet. Uh, and I'm a little bit disappointed that it hasn't happened because I really expected it to occur earlier. Now, I don't really know if the paper maybe um, might be wrong or if it's something to do with Space Engine, but I doubt it's the Space Engine because here the simulation is relatively accurate. So maybe it's just not 27 days. Maybe the person who has written the paper um, has miscalculated and or assumed that the alignments are... Um, basically use the very broad uh, definition for alignment. So maybe this was an alignment just now because I haven't seen a single linear alignment just yet. Now, it's a bit disappointing because the whole point of this video was to actually try to simulate this. And um, I'm definitely still going to publish this video just to kind of show you that that not all papers that are scientific and that get published uh, may actually be correct. But I'm going to just for fun run this a few more times and see if I actually succeed in simulating at least one of the planetary alignments that kind of looks relatively linear. Like, for example, can this be a linear alignment? And the answer is no once again. As you can see, they're kind of still misaligned. They are not forming exactly a straight line. Disappointing. Anyways, so that's the first topic I wanted to cover. And this topic is related to actually the uh, kind of an another paper that talks about how we actually look for different moons or exomoons um, around different planets. And the way we actually discovered these five planets and the way we discovered a lot of other exoplanets is by essentially uh, measuring the uh, deviations in, um, in the light spectrum of uh, various stars, but also by looking at how these planets interact with the star. So let's actually just pick a random other um, object, like for example, this right here, 40 Eridani, which if you ever watch Star Trek, this is essentially where, um, this is where Vulcan is supposed to be located. The planet Vulcan is in 40 Eridani. Unfortunately, I don't really know if there's any planets here. Let's look for them. This just might be actually stars. All right, yeah, there's definitely nothing here. There's no planets whatsoever. That's unfortunate. Let's look for something else that may actually have um, a planet with and exomoon as well. There's quite a lot of them in Space Engine, so I'm sure we we'll won't actually have trouble finding one. Um, so let's just take a look at, at this. So what do we have here? And look at that. I've just randomly uh, zoomed into one of the planets here, and it has a lot of different moons. Uh, this is actually a gas giant. I cannot really see what it says, but I think it's called a V2 Hydra 3. I think this is the name of this particular um, exoplanet. I don't really think it's a real exoplanet. I, I've never heard of it existing in real life, so it's possibly just randomly generated. Uh, but it does have these uh, really large moons orbiting around it. So, uh, And interestingly, the way we actually find these moons is very similar to the way we find exoplanets. So every time this particular moon orbits around its... Um, its, its planet, its host planet, it kind of covers a part of it. And because this is a very large planet, or uh, in some cases because it's a new planet, it might actually be uh, emitting a lot of the heat. So this particular gas giant, it's actually a hot gas giant, as you can see right here, um, does emit a lot of infrared light. But every time this particular object passes in front of it, it sort of covers a part of that infrared light. And we can see that from Earth. We can actually detect that from Earth uh, by looking at the infrared spectrum and seeing that not only did uh, the planet cover the star, star um, radiation, but also something covered the planetary radiation, and this must be an exomoon. Now, we haven't really discovered any just yet. It's only a very theoretical concept, um, but we've definitely discovered a lot of planets using this method of uh, spectroscopy, where we basically look at how the light is blocked um, by various exoplanets. And this is actually a pretty cool system. There's a lot of various objects orbiting around this. And I think this is a system called uh, 40 Hy Hydra. Yes, it's 40 Hydra, which is a system somewhere uh, a close to Earth, approximately 85 parsec away, uh, which is not very far, but I guess it's not very close either. So th this star is definitely real, but whether it has th this many exoplanets with moons is still unknown to us. 
But anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk in this video, and um, I've decided to kind of talk about two different things in this video, specifically, of course, about um, the Kepler-80 system, but also about how we det detect these exoplanets and um, exomoons. And this is actually a really, really cool system. It has quite a lot of really awesome moons orbiting around this one planet here. You can kind of see them appearing right here. I think they're just designated as warm asteroids. So this is a pretty interesting system that I just discovered completely by accident. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video, and unfortunately, uh, this experiment has failed. I was not able to recreate the um, planetary alignment in Kepler-80. Maybe you'll have more luck, and if you do, please let me know how you did it in the comments below. Otherwise, um, you can check out the actual paper that I mentioned in the description below and possibly get inspired by this paper to essentially write your own at some point because uh, the reason I actually wanted to talk about uh, this particular paper is because this was an undergraduate student that, uh, that wrote it. It wasn't a PhD student, it wasn't a doctorate student, it was someone uh, that just started university, that was working in university and uh, she was doing these studies um, at, in her undergraduate program, which is pretty awesome. Because even though I did this myself when I was younger, I never got to write awesome papers about uh, awesome stars, and I wish I did. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Game me later, and as always, bye-bye. And in the meanwhile, we're going to once again escape the galaxy and go for a spin around Milky Way. See you in the next video.